Hi. Uh, recently, I've been looking at this video about the uh, Kladni pattern, and it looks like this. Uh, maybe uh, some of you guys might have seen it before. It's a pattern of a sand on a steel plate, and you make a tone. <coughs> to this plate which makes a wave to this health and that sound wave the tone wave will make this kind of shape with the sand and I was really interested in this uh, system wanted to uh, re-implement it in Houdini if I could do it and I was searching for this stuff, how I can make this. And then I came into this YouTube video that he's explaining that this <coughs> pattern uh, that sand is being made can be uh, explained by the waved uh, plate like this. So actually the plate is waving like these if you exaggerate a lot so <clears throat> the sand will just go to where the threshold the the place where which never moves when the wave <clears throat> when the plate waves like this so you can see that the this edge this edge cross edge doesn't move when uh, you run the tone on the plate <clears throat> and so now I know that I have to make that kind of surface in order to simulate this kind of effect uh, but I need to I also need to know the equations for the surface so I searched a little bit more and came into this website explaining first it's explaining 3d cladney pattern with the equation so it's pretty interesting i might want to do it later <clears throat> but for the 2d it's explained here and it says that if you use these equations uh, and the place where it becomes zero will be uh, will be the place where the sand gathered and other than that it will make a height with these equations which will be a wavy surface so <clears throat> uh, from these equations I think I can make I can start making a surface and use that surface um, tangent vectors I can also simulate how the particle or I mean the sand will move around the surface and create this kind of patterns so let's try to do that okay I'll start from making a geometry as always geometry and delete the file and I'll start by making a grid since it's gonna be a kind of kind of 2.5 D uh, simulations and the size will be 1010 is okay let's make it possible to control the rows and columns as the resolution so let's make a null to gather all the parameters I'm gonna use I'm gonna name it controller and let's name it res as a resolution and it could be from 0 to 1000 apply let's set to 300 as an initial value and paste it on the rows and the columns okay let's show the grid <coughs> ah, sorry for that yeah so it's pretty dense right now I'm not sure if I need if it needs to be that dense but it's okay and let's also ah, okay at this time I think I can use 
the equation, this one, this equations, in order to make a wavy surface to this one. So I guess the easiest way is to use a point wrangle to uh, modify each point on the grid to uh, modify the height using that equations. Okay, so the equation was uh, first of all, let's see what kind of parameters I need. So the n and m will be the parameters. Okay, so let's make it as a parameter then. Okay, so first float n equals chf. I'll <clears throat> promote these parameters. Okay, and I'll also make the same parameter here so that I can link it. First n, the range is from 10 to 0 is fine. Apply another float, m, 10 to 0, it's fine. Okay, accept. Let's set a random number for now. Copy and to here and also here and rename it to M for this one. Okay. <clears throat> also, let's uh, get the resolution parameter as well, which is an integer. Okay, let's promote this and the resolutions come from here so I'll just copy this parameter and paste the reference here okay okay now <clears throat> um, in order to use these parameters I need to know the X and Y uh, index of this grid inside a grid so let's try to make that okay now the in x index could be calculated as uh, x id equal pt num pt num is the number of points and if i make a module uh, with the resolution then i should be able to get the x number for each point. Let's check that. Uh, let's look at the geometry spreadsheet and the x goes till uh, from 0 to 299 and go back to 0 again. Now let's see on the grid with the labels. Okay, let's add one marker XID XID marker text attribute XID. Okay. So starting from here, so yeah, on a Z axis it it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five. And I think it's correct. Now let's hide this. Let's do the same for the y int y id. For the y id, I'll just have to divide it and make the floor number. <coughs> okay, like this. And let's see. Let's see what I have to do next. Now I have to make an angle for the cosine, the first cosine, two cosines, and the later cosines, these ones. So <clears throat> let's make that. Um, these will be a I guess, okay, I think I can uh, use x and pi divided by L. L is, the, I think, is the length uh, of the uh, resolution. I mean the size of the grid for a column and the row. 
so it should be like uh, 300 or 299 since there's uh, the maximum number for x id is 299 okay so i can make the parameter for i mean the variable for these and these first and i'll name it x angle and y angle okay so float x uh, mm, i'll just name x angle x angle x equals to x id divided by float resolution dip minus one times pi float angle y y id divided by float resolution minus one times pi okay and uh let's do the final calculations this one so I'll just make a variable called C as a calculation cosine uh, n times angle x times cosine m times angle y minus cosine uh, m times angle x times cosine n times angle y okay this should be the calculate uh, equations now <coughs> um let's make a color value here at this point uh, i'll name it color in order to color the surface based on the height okay so the call will be i'm gonna use an absolute and divide it by 2.0 and <coughs> make a parameter called call and insert a call okay and also in order to make it as a surface I need to change the height of the points each point on a grid so the final thing you have to do the point y will be I'll just use the value call which I made it for the color there now it's already making something some interesting surface like this and let's see how the n and m parameter will change the surface shape okay let's hide the uh, grid at this point now if you look at the website uh, it, it can it's showing the the grid and the table when the m and n changes it change the shape like these so let's say if i change the m to 5 and n to 1 so if i change the n 1 and if i change to m to 5 now i can kind of see the same pattern although this is in 3d but uh, in 2d you can see that these uh, black part is similar to the way uh, it occurs on the ridged uh, uh, geometry, a ridged uh, place of this geometry. Okay, well, so let's try to color this thing to make it able to see the ridge line a little bit more. Okay, so I'll use the color. <coughs> Oops. Hey. And let's use the ramp from attribute and use the call. And there, uh, you see that the black ridge, if you just look at the black ridge lines, it sure does look like the 2D image here. So if I change the N to 2, Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Now, in this website, it's, sh it's just showing the N M and N parameter in integer, but I can also use float, which will make an interesting, kind of interesting animated uh, sequence of this wave. Cool. Okay, 
now I am ready to make go for the sand part, the particle part, I guess. Okay, let's do that. Uh, so what I want to do is to plot some random points on a surface first and then move that uh, sand uh, each frame uh, based on the tangent vector which goes down trying to uh, so I want I would like to let those parameters I mean particles on the surface to go down to the uh, ridge line here so that the point itself will make a pattern like a sand pattern that I show you on the YouTube video um, and that's what I want to simulate now there might be a way to use this particle flues but I am just gonna do it like uh, <clears throat> vex way I mean I'm gonna just make a points and control it using a vex uh, using like <clears throat> all time um, real time uh, processing way like you do in processing or open frameworks since that's what I'm used to do it so I'll do that way now first let's make initial points using scatter on a surface now I think I'll want to be able to control the number of points for the initial points so I will make a parameter for that one uh, let's make a parameter called uh, num as a number of particles okay and make the range from 0 to maybe like 10,000 I mean yeah 10,000 and let's set to something like 2,000 something and copy this parameter and paste it on the false total count first <laughs> now this is the initial points now let's also make an attribute here attribute called attribute create and let's call the new parameter uh, <coughs> called a life in order to control the size of the particle and also the the life like when it's gonna die and uh, to make a new uh, particle from the random position uh, I want to do like that because um, at some point when particle goes to the ridge curves which lines to specific uh, geometry then it's even though you change the s shape of the surface from one to another it's a bit hard for the already being moved out uh, particle to go to the other edges so <clears throat> other ridge lines so I would like to like recreate the points at some point just like uh, the guy is doing here like at some point he or she is like I don't know what this is, salt or sand is refilling the sand on a plate so I'm gonna have to do the same thing for this one okay so there's a life and here comes the solver so let's uh, input the first uh, input which is this these initial points to the first input and then the, uh, the reference surface which I want to use it for calculating the tangent vector in order to move downward uh, to the second input now let's go inside and first thing I would like to do is to ray the points on a surface I mean the pro project the points on a surface so maybe I could do that beforehand for the initial position uh, so I will make a ray here 
and create uh, okay create array like this and initially it is set to project like normals but uh well since the points could be projected on a y direction so i guess i'm gonna use a vector and let's delete those channels and enter one okay now all the points has been projected on the surface right now as an initial position okay it's cool let's make a null here okay looks good now let's input this to the first input of the solver let's go inside and well since i'm gonna run this uh again and again for each frame uh first thing i would do is to do the rate again since you never uh, once you move the points it will go uh, surely it will go off the surface so you want to stick it to the surface again <clears throat> now at this point i'm not going to use a y direction projection because you point might go outside the surface you can uh, if you stick to the y projection it will not find any surface so i'm gonna use the minimum distance yeah like this and from here uh, let's uh, make a some little bit uh, some let's use the point wrangle to calculate the tangent vector and move to the move downward now in order to test it out i think it's not a good idea to do it in uh, <clears throat> inside solver so i'm i think i'm gonna do it outside solver first oops and go here go back here and let's make a test uh implementation outside of solver then we'll go back to solver later on if i have uh, a function good enough function so first of all array okay and oh i'm a bit afraid i'm gonna lose this file later on so i'm gonna save it somewhere maybe on the desktop okay and i'll name it kladni pattern okay now uh minimum distance for the array okay and let's make a null to hide these blue lines okay now let's make a point wrangle now here comes a little bit of uh, vector calculations that you might not like i don't know well first thing let's make a parameter i mean yeah parameter called p rad stands out as a radius of the particle that you wanna that you're gonna uh, create and i'm gonna name this p rad okay promote this and let's make a parameter called p rad here p rad okay apply range uh, range from maybe 0 to point 0.1 okay and copy this parameter and paste it here okay <clears throat> now um so the right now the points is directly on the surface but if i try to visualize that with the sphere probably uh this means that the sphere itself the particle will be stuck half of its uh geometry inside the surface so i want to raise up the position of this particle a little bit to above uh, maybe using this p 
prad value. So point y plus equal, which means at the radius, prad radius. Okay, so it has been raised up a little bit. Now, <clears throat> mm, so what I want here is let's uh, look at the surface. What I want is to create a vector which goes downward for each point so that using that downward vector I can move these points for next next frame uh, towards these ridge lines. Now so that means I have to get somehow the uh, the downward vector the, the tangent vector which goes downward now uh, first of all what I could do is uh, check if I am having a normal vector first okay so let's look at here and um, I show the normal I don't have normals here so uh, basically I think it will be a good start to do from a normal on a surface which is come from the surface so in order to get a, a normal vector which is uh, based on this surface the projected surface I can I think I can do it in on the ray here let's look at it uh, for the first ray uh, he, he, here point intersection normal okay and I let's also add this one as well for the second ray which will which these will be inside a solver later on okay let's save this <clears throat> now I have those uh, normal vectors uh, next thing I could do is to just ignore the y this uh, y um, <coughs> vector uh, y value of this normal uh, vector. So what I could do, let's make a vector called axis and normalize and use the normal x. And for the y, let's set to zero and get the normal value okay let's try to visualize this axis by inserting axis to the normal to see how it looks like okay now the normal vector got flattened which which is direct directing to the x y plane on x y plane <clears throat> okay it's good now uh, I would like to next I would like to rotate this vector 90 degrees uh, using the y-axis so that later on I can use the rotated vector as a another axis to actually rotate the current normal uh, vector uh, of each point to make the downward um, <coughs> Um, vector well so let's uh, first let's uh, rotate this by an y-axis by 90 degrees so in order to do that in Houdini I first I need to make a quaternion so I'll name it quote quat and qu quaternion and I want to rotate by radians of 90 degrees and by y axis now uh, in order to rotate you can use the Q rotate which will use the quotidian to rotate the vector uh, first quad and based on this axis I mean, I want to uh, I want to rotate this axis using quotidian. Now, I, s I also want to normalize this in, in just in case. 
maybe I don't need it, but... Okay, now let's show the surface to check. Yeah, now it is aligned, these uh, vectors are now aligned uh, with the surface. Now what I can do is to use this uh, generated vector to use it as an axis, a new axis to rotate the original normal, which is this one, 90 degrees downward, so that in result you will have a downward vector. Makes sense. Okay, so let's make another uh, quaternion. I'll name it quad2. And quaternion uh, radians. 90 axis again and uh, normal <coughs> now I would like to make the normal to be the Q rotated I mean Q rotate Q what to the current normal now let's also normalize this just in case maybe I don't need this yeah now I got it now I got the vector which goes downward cool now finally let's um, change the current position of the point using this vector so I can use, I can write like the new point position will be added by a normal times by some moving factor. Maybe I can parameterize this as well. Uh, let's see. Float speed, I guess. And use the speed here Ooh. Ooh. okay let's promote the parameter here and let's also make the speed oops parameter here as well um, okay speed speed range from 0 to 1 apply let's copy this parameter and paste it here okay let's save this now okay now I have made a attribute called life and what I want to do here is that uh, I would like to uh, increment the current life attributes which is on each point by one for each frame so I'll be simple access to the life and plus one one to increment now finally uh, let's also set the p scale so that they could be used as the size of the particle so f p scale and I would like to change the the scale of the particle based on the life. So let's access let's access the life. Maybe this is I and times zero point zero five or something. Hmm. This could be parameterized, but I don't want to make it too much of a parameter. So. Okay, and also let's uh, limit the maximum size to one to avoid making the particle size too big. Okay. Now finally, let's make a function to remove the point at some point. Uh, I mean, to remove the particle at some point because uh, you want to reduce the number of points for each iterations <clears throat> and you want to make a new particle be born at some random place again 
Okay, so let's make a fun uh, condition. If I life is larger than maybe uh, let's make some random numbers because if I make it constant, consistent, all the points will be dead at the same time. So I don't want to do that. So let's make a random using the pt num times some random number as a seed times 30 so in between 10 to 40 uh, frames each point will die randomly uh, in order to make it dead I'm gonna use a remove point at ptnum okay now let's see if it's if it has been moved let's hide the normal and let's see if i click here yes it has been moved a little bit and i think it's been going downward as i wanted to okay <clears throat> Cool. Now let's delete this. Okay. Now the next thing, since I removed the points, I uh, I also need to make a function in order to create a new points and keep the total points count same. Now, <clears throat> in order to do that. I what I can do is to okay let's first make a null oops let's first make a null for the this surface and make a another scatter point here to make a random points but here the the number of points that I want to make here is a total number, which is 2,292 for me. I'll paste it here, minus the current point number, which is, well, everything, 200, 2,200. 92 so what I can how I'll be able to get it okay I'll move the null to here and I'll um, I'll name it moved and I will access to the number of points of this moved node using n points uh, moved like this so right now uh, this number of total number of points on a moved node and the total number is the same so the result is zero for a new scattering that's fine since nothing is removed right now since it's in the frame one makes sense and let's merge these points together and I think that's it the one that you have to make inside the solver now let's copy these let's save this for oops cut cut it out and paste it here okay it didn't crash okay and this is how it should go like this and let's go outside and look at the solver and let's see how it goes if i play it oops mm. <clears throat> now something is wrong be since Points have been removed, but nothing is being made as a new one, obviously. So something must be wrong. 
Okay, the calculation seems wrong. Okay, I think I'm not really accessing to the one that's outside this, uh, which is above this node. Okay, I think I need to go back here and copy this number again. Yeah, so the ref re relative reference have been changed since I come into the solver. So let's repaste this. Okay, looks totally different. Let's also check this triangle if the link is correct. No, it's not correct. So, okay, I'll remember the name. PRAD. I'll just re rename this PRAD speed speed okay now yeah I have the parameters okay now should be okay go back let's play this again yep yep something weird <laughs> well you can see at this point it is making a pattern to reach pattern but at some point maybe there are some entropy here keeping this kind of geometry not sure how it came like this Okay, now at this point, since I have set the p-scale for each point, I think I can set the um, <coughs> p, I mean the spheres for each point, draw a sphere. So let's make a sphere and make it polygon and copy stamp. Uh-huh, and I have set the radius for the point here, so let's copy this and set it to the uniform scale of this particle. Okay, all right, now, <coughs> I also, uh, at this point I only have particles here which is okay but I would like to show the surface as well in order to see how it, how the surface is affecting the movement of the point so let's also show the surface as well by just merging those two together here it goes Now, uh, let's change some values for the surface and see how it goes. If I play like this, yes, the ridge points start together on ridge lines. And let's see if I change the surface value at runtime. Now it's slowly the points goes die dies out and go to the new rich point. Maybe I should make the points wait. Maybe I should make the points a larger, a bit larger, like this. Mm, something is a bit off here. I mean points being made really stick together like this it doesn't look correct to me I think yeah it doesn't look that correct now um, let me pose a little bit to the back what's going on <clears throat> Okay, I seem to be missing some points here. Uh, first of all, 
I have set the attribute create, uh, which I made it here to be an integer value since I'm adding by one here. And also inside the solver, uh, since for each frame I would like to plot the points to different positions, so I'm using the frame number plus some random number for a global seed of the point, which should change the position for each frame. And plus I am creating a new attribute for newly created points, uh, adding a life attribute again here, since at this point nothing has. And by doing this, if I have a surface like this, and play let's juggle on the real time yeah that's what i wanted so yeah this is i i guess this is it how you can simulate the cluttony uh, surface effect cluttony patterns using the equations for the wave surface plus um, I gotta restart plus the the change of the surface plus the these particle movement which I really like I really like those it's pretty interesting isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm satisfied. So that's it. That's how you can simulate the Cluttony pattern. Hope you liked it. Thank you.